Hi, this is Jim from XQ in English, and today I will be doing another commentary uh, of a game that was played in 1956. The game was collected in a series of uh, brevities that was published in the periodical Qi Yi, which is the most read, most widely read Shangqi periodical today. Red was Grandmaster Yang Guanglin, uh, one of the legends in Shangqi history. Uh, he was the first undisputed Shangqi champion in 1956 and was w one of the first few people to be crowned to give it, to be given the title of Grandmasters when the title became available. Uh, Grandmaster Yang Guanglin was from Guangdong and under his tutelage, the Guangdong team is a Shangqi superpowerhouse, superpowerhouse today. More can be read about uh, a sh about him in a short article that I wrote on my website at the following link. Okay, before we continue, uh, this match was played in 1956 in the first ever Chinese National Xiangqi Championships. Uh, before 1956, there were no unified tournaments in China that could determine who was the best in China. So 1956 was a very important year in the history of China and this event is very is one of the most important events in China to date. It is still held annually and uh, any the winner would be automatically promoted to Grandmaster in China. Okay. Uh, Grand, Grandmaster Yang Guanling was the first winner of the 1956 tournament and has stamped his name in the history of Xiangqi. In this match, he started with the central cannon and his opponent, Zhang Zhenghua, uh, countered with the opposite direction cannons. Uh, this opening system is very ancient and could be found in the ancient manuals like um, the plum flower manual, the secret in the tangerine, etc. Okay. In the match, it developed Black developed his left horse as an edge horse. It was one of the ways that was suggested by the ancient manuals where Black would tempt Red to capture the Red Cannon. If Red did capture the Red Cannon, Black would play, after moving an advisor, Black would play H2 plus 3 to chase the cannon away and gain some initiative. Uh, however, analysis of this position has suggested that uh, Black would have been better off developing his horse as a proper horse in this case, where the central foul would be strengthened and Black would you still have a playable game. In the periodical Qi, uh, there were two lines that were given and studied for the <coughs> to show why H8 plus 7 would be superior. At this point, the red chariot had to retreat to his palace corner to protect the horse. Uh, it, it cannot, it cannot stay put at this point, as black would have the threat of c5 plus 4 for the check, and to capture the red chariot with the horse. Uh, losing a chariot so early in the game would, would usually mean that uh, black would have the upper hand and a, a significant advantage later on in the game. However, as the red chariot was cornered, uh, Black would use his cannons to attack the red chariot. And after trading the other chariot, Black would have a very powerful formation and Black would still have a very playable game. So this is one of the reasons why uh, developing the horse as a proper horse is advocated for similarly, similar situ situations in the opening. Uh, in, the, in the magazine, in the periodical, 
uh, there were other variations that were described and explained but uh, it will be beyond the context of this video. Back to the match. Black had developed his horse as an edge horse and we shall see what went on, what continued. At this point, uh, Red had advanced his cannon to Black's pawn ring and was prepared to attack the central pawn. Uh, uh, since the the other black horse was developed as a edge horse and black's central foe was relatively fragile, but one might wonder instead instead of playing a4 plus 5, uh, would black have been better if he had pushed the pawn forward instead and deny the red cannon a chance to attack the central pawn? This was also described in the periodical. And Red will be able to adjust his forma this defensive formation in time, and Black would have a hard time trying to attack this flank. Red, on the other hand, would have um, managed to concentrate several major pieces on to attack and apply pressure on Black's right flank. Uh, Red would be considered to have a significant advantage at this point. And back to the game. After Black played a4 plus 5 to defend his central file. Red, Red continued with p3 plus 1 to develop his horse. And in retaliation, Black played c8, <coughs> traversed his cannon to the 7th file to apply pressure and prepare for p3 plus 1. However, judging from the way the match went, Black would have been better if he had played c8 equals to 6. And with the red chariot already in place on the rib file, red became, <coughs> began his final assault. As can be seen, if the cannon had moved to the sixth file earlier on, a black would not have wasted. If uh, black chose to capture the the red, <coughs> the red horse, red would continue to capture the black horse in retaliation. And the grip chariot over here would be prepared to play, to be prepared to advance to the pawn rank to protect and link his cannons up. Red would have a very mobile and open position, while Black's position would still be cramped. And since the Black uh, horse did not capture, Red chose to trade horses in this manner. Uh, this by traversing the other cannon to the central file, uh, Red will begin to apply pressure on Red's, on Black's central file. Uh, why did Black play c3 equals to 1? The reason is because the Red cannon was already on the central file and the and red's rib chariot was prepared for the iron bolt checkmate uh, as can be seen red would move this advisor and be prepared to move his king here so to defend against the iron bolt checkmate black had to traverse his cannon so that he could retreat here and guard his bottom rank uh, because he had advanced his pawn earlier the black chariot could not traverse to this flank for defense <coughs> and the horse being stored on the edge was not a, was a non-factor in this situation as it could not do anything to chase the red cannon away as, as can be seen uh, red would be threatening to checkmate with uh, r6 plus 8 and Black could only defend in this manner. 
Uh, at this point, the Grandmaster definitely pushed his edge pawn forward. This will allow for development of his horse. And instead of uh, retreating his cannon away, uh, Black, uh, Red, the Grandmaster chose to push his pawn forward. That is because if he had retreated his if he had retreated his cannon, there would be a space here for the black horse to move, so that <coughs> the iron the threat of the iron bolt checkmate would not be as great. After trading another pawn, Black was prepared to capture the central pawn and try to relieve some tension on over try to decrease the pressure he had on his central file. However, it would be too late as the Grandmaster would now demonstrate what I consider to be the textbook material on the tactic of leveraging material. Instead of moving his pawn away or advancing his advancing his pawn, the Grandmaster deftly traversed his rear cannon. With this move, Red would now be prepared to threaten to checkmate with c8 plus 7, followed by r6 plus 8. And Black could only defend passively in this manner. So what would happen if Red Black had continued to capture the central pawn? Checkmate. The same thing would happen if the black horse captured the red cannon. Checkmate. Uh, this checkmate is called a drawer checkmate, whereby the red chariot uh, is used to attack the advisor to force the enemy king to the throat rank and retreat it again with aid from his king for the checkmate, for the ranked che checkmate. That was why in the actual game, uh, the black cannon could only defend very passively with c1 equals to 2. However, this with this position, red would now demonstrate the tactic of leveraging material. Because the black cannon cannot capture the red cannon, if if he did, black uh, red would checkmate with r6 plus 8. Because of this fact, red would definitely advance his horse forward and threaten to capture the black cannon so, uh, to achieve the checkmate that was shown earlier. And black could only move his cannon back to the corner of the board. And Red will use this as momentum to build more momentum as he, he attacks with his horse. So at this point, Black uh, resigned. Uh, this is because of the elbow horse threat, elbow horse checkmate threat. If the Black Elephant captured the Red horse, Red would checkmate with R6 plus 8. And because of this game, uh, later Shang-Chi players would not favor uh, developing the left horse as an edge horse as shown here. And uh, another thing to note about this uh, game would be the, uh, the be the threat of the black of the red chariot, where when it made when it played R1 plus one followed by R1 equals to 6, where it commanded this very important line. And thank you for bearing with me in this game. I think the most important thing that I learned when I saw this game many years ago was the tactic of leveraging, and leveraging a piece using another piece. And I think uh, this example is just perfect textbook material. Okay, so thank you again, and I will be trying to do more videos. Please subscribe to my channel and have a nice day.